getting it started with a little revelry brew per use. Per use. Shout out to them boys, crushing it. Just got done with their uh, four year anniversary video. Mm-hmm. It's about to be awesome. About to be lit. It was so lit, live, woke. <laughs> All those things. Don't get, don't get too off the rails over there, Jay Wayne. It's early in the evening. It is. Gonna it be is. Dropping lit live and woke back to back to back. Well, those are what Nick Chubb is. All those things. Is that what it is? The about trifecta? To, about to get into a little Nick Chubb. Man, is that guy just fun to watch, talk about, think about. I would say he's well above a mid level boss. Oh, he for sure. He's been promoted. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, he came into the league as a mid level boss. He did. He was drafted as a mid level boss. And then he I got mean, that, that prom- high second round pick. Hmm. That's that's he was drafted as a boss ho, as a boss regular boss but a boss in waiting okay or in training yeah right because Carlos I was gonna be there mm-hmm. and you were like man we we were strongly pro Nick Chubb here big time and we were willing to wait and all of a sudden he only had to be a boss in waiting for a couple of weeks it right. probably felt forever for the you know the high drafters but he definitely he started off slow right you watch him in the preseason week one he was just getting stuffed right but he's out there with second third stringers it's his first game ever oh it was horrible he was pressing it was it wasn't horrible it wasn't as horrible like when I, when I say it was horrible it, the fallout the fantasy mm-hmm. chitter chatter chitter. You, the, the ridiculousness on Twitter the Twitter right. chitter Golly. chatter over the top it was see this dude's not any good he's 230 right. pounds he's too big it's sluggish a, it's a it's a small man's game these days it I was like it was driving me nuts we came on here and was like this is don't a lot worry. better than it looked don't worry about it don't listen to these people it's so one week he got it rolling a little bit in the preseason doesn't doesn't do much into the regular season it's the carlos hyde show you get to week four versus the raiders he busts off a couple of ridiculous runs First, the Raiders, but you can't take a couple of forty-yard two to housers away from anybody, yeah, right? I mean, they weren't they weren't tanking at that point. I don't think they were still trying to win in week four. You would you would hope, but I I think it's pretty pretty obvious that they were tanking since day one. That's fair, <laughs> but it still took trading Carlos Hyde away to get this guy some more work. And man, has he literally ran with this opportunity? Well, I mean, the, the, it was a light switch. I mean, even still, like even week one, two, like that was three carries, 21 yards, two carries, 14 yards. That's seven yards a carry. Obviously, the number is a small, small, small sample size. Carry, though. About as small a sample size as it gets, mm-hmm. you know. But, you know, it's he he had it. And then the big week against the, the tanking Raiders, can't take that of those runs away. And like you said, and then boom, Carlos Hyde gets traded. And it's the Nick Chubb show. 18 carries for 80 and a touch next week against Steelers. Steelers did come in there. Did, they did go to travel to the Steelers, and I believe it was like Steelers minus six or seven or something like that on the line. And Steelers handed them, but still got 18 carries and that you're lo- and two catches, which you know you're looking for that usage. And then the next week against the Chiefs, 22 carries catch. Last week, 20 carries, three catches. And you when you're getting workhorse usage like that. That's really what you're looking for, Absolutely. and then let it play out as it as it may. When you got a 230 pound back, that's a stud physically. At, you know, we've been saying it for months now about how if he didn't blow his knee out, we talked about that in the mock it up before we fuck it up. We talked about that in the running back breakdown, the rookie running back breakdown in February about yeah. how if Nick Chubb didn't blow his knee out two years ago. He's right there along he, with he, Barkley. Well, he probably would have come out with Leonard Fournette was what I was saying. Right. So it wouldn't have been Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley, at two freak athletes because Nick Chubb without the injury probably would have come out the year before last with Fournette. And he's probably right there as far as right. highly regarded. Exactly. And so, But look at this man. Look at what he's doing. Did, yeah, so check out. Since week seven, look listen at these to these stats. freaking numbers. All right, these are the He's first in all these categories. All right, He's first in carries with 78. First in yards with 406. First in first downs. First in 10-plus yard runs. Second in the league in yards after contact with 4.1, which totals 400, 477 yards after contact. Now, I know he had a 92-yard touchdown run. Sure. And that kind of skews those stats a little bit. Well, I will beat that that stat up, but the, if you think about But, it, I mean, think about Rashad Penny in college. He had plenty of 90-yard touchdown runs that skewed the five yards per carry after contact. That's why he's so good. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. The YouTube video we put out about is Rashad Penny a bust? The week he does good, man, all those people just come out of the woodworks. Piling on. 
Loving See, I told it. you, I told you so. Well, the, the the what's cool about those stats right there is that he's number one in first downs, and a 92-yard run only gets you one first down right. stat. So you check off a, a one first down for that 92-yard run touchdown, only gets you one first down. So that's pretty cool what well, he's here's, been doing. Here's my favorite stat. 25 tackles broken. That's seventh in the league right now amongst running backs, and he wasn't even getting the work. Right. If you if that's I like that. Okay, so he's been get Carlos got traded four games ago. So in the four games that Carlos has been gone, he's basically averaging twenty carries a game. Right. The four game the one, two, three, four, five, six games before that, six times three, eighteen, might not have been all the way with two of those were twos. So basically my man's got five games worth of carries. Right. Because those all those games with Carlos Hyde, you add them up, they're really on only one of these games. By the way, it would have had like 130 something yards and two touchdowns because of the Raiders game. But so, five games in, we're 10 games into the NFL schedule, NFL schedule. He's only played five. Mm -hmm. And he's seventh in the league in broken tackles. What else do you need out of my man? You can't tackle this. What else do you need? Business decisions. Right. Are being made. Right. Because when attempting to tackle this, you came in here and you were like, what in the world happened to all the defensive backs? We watched Falcons for the 92 yard run. He's he's sprint because I wanted to be like the second gear, which I believe he has is the most impressive thing about him, in my opinion. I'll get into that in a second. But like he's accelerating past all these dudes. But then you look and it's like it's Grady Jarrett and it's that uh, A.J. Hawk looking linebacker 50. Right. And another big dude. And there's no chance those guys are catching. I'm like, where are these defensive backs that? Are able to business track decision. down business. right. He already busted them off. Right, the business they were like, "Hey, uh, look, a bird." Right, you know they're. Oh, what coach? Did you say something? Did you need me? Y'all boys asking for my. Why t- you on my name in play, coach? <laughs> <laughs> did somebody? Did you hear a whistle? Did you whistle? Business decision. Business decision. Chubb's got ahead of speed. They were like, mm, "I'm hungry." This cat is so big. Let me get some water. And so elusive. The change of direction is is awesome. He's got some shimmy. Like the movie puts on defensive backs in the second level is just ridiculous. The power and the tackle breaking ability is very impressive, but it's that it's that second gear in the open field. And like the short area burst is is impressive. But when he gets in the open field and he hits that gear, like that that touchdown against the Raiders where he just pulled away from everybody. And there right. was defensive backs in the frame. Right. There. Nobody was catching up with him. How, how does a guy that big just kick it in? Hit the NOS button, basically. Turbo. Because he only ran a 4.52 at the combine, but I feel like he's getting stronger as this year is going on. He's getting faster. He just looks bigger and faster than everybody out there. You can't tackle this dude. Can't tackle him. And I think it might have been maybe Brian Baldinger that put a two-minute video up on Twitter. Uh, There's a lot of stuff on Twitter that drains me, but I go Mm -hmm. for the stats and I go for the breakdown videos and Mm -hmm. all that good stuff. And it was... I, I don't know if it was the 92-yard run, but one of the runs where he was approaching the line and there was a dude and he had to jump to the left and then right after that he had to jump back to the right to get in the hole and Brian Baldinger was just like slowing it down. And, you know, it kind of drains me because people pull it back two or three times to show you in slow-mo. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, play the play one time so I can see this in real speed and then come back with the slow-mo so I can see what you're talking about. But never, I digress. It was a good little video and it, his hips to get – his hips following his eyes mm-hmm. was basically what I don't know if Brian Bollinger put that together in the video, but that's what I thought he was getting. I thought, I thought, I thought that's what he was trying to say was Nick Chubb saw the guy that he needed to get around. His hips got him around and he saw the hole that he needed to get to. And his hips got him back into the hole and then fast forward from there. And it's just like when you got the athlete that Nick Chubb is and you got the vision that Nick Chubb has, I mean, you put those couple of those and, things and together. The line is playing pretty good. Sure. Well, I mean, everybody knows the Browns have had a good line for a while, and they've hit some hiccups this year, and they have some down games. And What's going to happen when you lose an all-time, all-pro, all-everything left tackle? This is true. This is true. And there's just – it's it's such – that's why the teams call, talk about the NFL season as like first quarter, first four games of the year, second quarter, next four games of the year. Because, I mean, this stuff is brutal. Mm-hmm. These guys are out there just – it's a gladiator sport. Everybody – at this time of the year, everybody's hurt. Especially those teams that are just now getting to a bye week. They've been, you know, you get to a team that has had a bye week within the last week or two. They're a lot fresher than somebody that's been playing nine, ten straight games. And so you got, you you got the it's a war of attrition. And who's the healthiest that can come to the to the game on Sunday versus if you got if you're healthy and you got some good X's and O's. So now the Browns 
fired the coaches a couple mm-hmm. two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and now hashtag coaching matters. Then you got play you just mixing it up in the backfield. Is was it Freddie Kitchens, the new offensive coordinator, and the, he's the running backs coach, Bruce Bruce Arians disciple, and just like who there, I've heard rumors of Bruce Arians was said. The only team he would come out of retirement to coach would be the Browns. That would be fun. That would be pretty cool. We could, you know, cross our fingers and, right. and hope for that. But for Baker's sake, right? Yeah, for everybody's sake, right? Jarvis, give me some, you know, give me some some high end, top tier coaching talent because it talent co- coaching talent matters. If you don't believe me, just look at the Rams and the Chiefs and all, and the and the Bears. Bears. Anybody, anybody paying attention to this stuff? Or maybe the uh, Titans even. Right. Want to go out on a limb there? Well, you the Titans went to a bye week to just like I was talking about two weeks ago. The Titans go into a bye, come out and just shellac the, the Cowboys by two touchdowns that they were almost a touchdown underdog. They beat them by two, t- two touchdowns. They're a touchdown underdog this week to the Patriots. And they beat them down to, I mean, blow them out. They didn't yeah. even have to play in the second half. They just Mm-mm. manhandled the Patriots. And everybody wants to say, as well, it's well, Brady's old. It had nothing to do with Mm-mm. Brady. They, the Titans just came out there and whooped them. So, anyway, the Browns now, they with the two weeks removed from the coaching changes, and this offense is just freeing up. They, they're they protecting Baker. They're bring, you know, putting. Now, they did hit the Falcons. And the Falcons, you know. Well, they hit the Falcons and, they hit and the, the Chiefs. Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, all right. Fair. Fair you know? point. Hit hit two of the easier defenses to right. play against. Chiefs on the road, mind you. You don't go right. into Arrowhead and get the same defense. It's different. You get you go play True. at the Chiefs. You get a different different defense. That that crowd, they're, they're mm-hmm. putting them up against Seattle. Um, but, yes, they did play. They did get the Falcons and the Chiefs, which is probably at home, two in a row. Best case scenario to fire your coach and see those two defenses roll in. But, yeah, I mean, they hand – I mean – it was still a game in the third quarter. You got a turnover against the Falcons, and then you get punch it in, and then Chubb goes for 92 yards, and it looks like a blowout. But the Browns will take it, man. They Absolutely. Didn't, they didn't have to go to overtime, and they won by more than a field goal. They didn't have to, you know. Have, they have never felt that way. Right. I, I no. bet Browns fans. They didn't have to kick a field goal with the time running out. I got to give it to Browns fans because if you, like, we don't go out. I don't go out in public too much and watch these games. We, we usually hear watching four TVs, but Casey's been out of town, and I went out and watched some games. Like Browns fans are out there and they're watching the whole game and they're just like sulking. And that's just <laughs> what they know. That's just what they know. They know loss. Yeah. So I can't imagine what they must have felt like being up like this. Sure. In the middle of the third true, quarter, true. knowing this game's in the bag. Look, it's good for them, man. Looking they, at the scoreboard, like, like is this real? Then right. Is there a, Should be flipped. Right. Is this flipped? Good this, for them, man. Did they miss something up? And they took good, it to him at home. I like good it. Good for the Browns. Good for Nick Chubb. All right. So obviously we love Nick Chubb. Love Nick Chubb. We've been telling you to buy Nick Chubb for weeks. If you listen to this show, you've you've at least tried to acquire this dude because we've been telling you to go buy him for whatever it took to get him. And now it's gonna be really hard. You can't forget a first round pick. The first round pick's not getting it done. No. And so I've been trying to figure out, you know, I knew we were going to come on here. I knew we were going to talk a ton about the Browns and 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 how awesome Nick Chubb is. But like, what does that do for your dynasty fantasy football team? How can we equate this? So let's let's throw a couple players up at least. Maybe try and do a little bit of a ranking here. We we got uh, DLF's ADP pulled up uh, for uh, what is it November, and uh, we, we're sorted by the running backs. And I don't, you know, I don't think, although I have seen on Twitter. <laughs> A bunch of stats where they compare Nick Chubb to Saquon Barkley, and all of his all of Nick Chubb's stats are like better than Barkley's. Not the receptions, obviously. Well, yeah, they want to leave that part out. <laughs> uh, but they're like, why is there so much hi- hype around Saquon, and, and Nick Chubb doesn't get the hype? And it's like, are you trying to say that Nick Chubb's better than Saquon? What do you, what is your point of this tweet? That's why I hate Twitter. Yeah. Because uh, they probably just want a bunch of comments of blah, 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 blah. click clickbait, right? Clickbait. Killing me, but so uh, give me Saquon, right? I'm not. Obviously. I love Nick Chubb, obviously. Got to take Saquon. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, you got to take Saquon, and we live in a, pay, a PPR world. PPR world. It's a, it's it's uh, not only is Saquon. And I am a material girl. Not, right. Not only does is Saquon get another hundred total yards this week, and he's on pace to do things that only like Eric Dickerson, Ladanian Thompson type running backs has ever done. Marshall Falk. He's up in those those guys that catch balls get you know 
passing yard. He's, he's a total a yards. Team, man. He's a total yards kind of guy when it comes to passing. Cat, you know, catching and passes. Dominant in both categories. Very dominant. Very dominant on a terrible team. So get out of my face. Exactly. I mean, Saquon is is he is the generational talent. Right. And then you add to the fact that Eli Manning loves to dump it off because he ain't trying to get hit. Mm-hmm. It's a perfect world for fantasy points for right. Saquon right now. Right. So it's not. There's. I can't can't get down with comparing the two. Right. All right. So Todd Gurley, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Ezekiel Elliott, Kareem Hunt. We're not putting Chubb above any of those guys, right? Absolutely not. But this basically what we just did was we pulled up the DLF ADP rankings and what the average draft position on DLF for last month, and then sorted by running backs. So all the I the, said all that. Did you? Yeah. yeah I wasn't listening. Yeah. That dude. Oh, I definitely don't listen to you. What you have to say. <laughs> Just I know. Kidding. No, I, I know. I was. I don't know what I was doing over here. Right. I was trying to sort. I was. I said only up. running backs. You set them up. I, I say even said we sorted by running backs. Count normally <laughs> count it. Normally you set it up so I can knock them down. We both set them up. There's two sets of things up. Two setups. We better <laughs> deliver here. Somebody better knock something down. All right, Christian McCaffrey. I'm, I'm gonna, that one, My bad. I'm gonna hold Christian. You got the PPR exactly right. We we catch balls. We get points. Melvin Gordon. I'll take Melvin. Got to. Joe Mixon? You going uh, Nick Chubb or Joe Mixon? I think I got to go Joe Mixon. I me, love Nick Chubb, but Joe Mixon has Le'Veon Bell type talent. Right. He can break tons of tackles. He's super smooth. He's super fast. And he's so good in the passing game. Great in the passing game. And that's, I got, I'm, I got to stay in Joe Mixon as well. Yeah. Just because of the same. The two weeks ago against the Chiefs, and I know it's against the Chiefs, and you're chasing points and everything, and that was two weeks ago when Duke Johnson had his coming out party. But, you know, Nick Chubb got you 20 carries for 87 yards and a catch and and, and five yards. So basically got you 10 points. And that's obviously this week he has a 92-yard run, and that was half. I even tried to set that up before we started here. I was like, well, what would have happened without the 92-yard run? And we had tried to figure out, it was in the middle of the third quarter, so it was so much game to be let, and that was basically them started to blowing out the Falcons. So I'm not trying to take anything away from what Nick Chubb's doing. Right. All, like I said, all you can ask for a guy is to get 20 carries, but this is a PPR world we live in, and if you can get that that hybrid, if you can get the guy that does both, he's going to give you a safer floor, and then he's going to give you that ceiling like – you can't count on Nick Chubb to give you 30 points a week because he's not going to always get enough touchdowns to do it. But somebody like even Carryon Johnson had an off game this week because the Bears were blowing out the Lions, but and he only got 50 yards on the ground, but he still got 25, 26 fantasy points because he caught six balls. That's another t- that's another touchdown, you know. Right. So, but it, Chubb's coming on strong. Week eight, he had three targets, nine he had only had one, and then week ten another three for, uh, for three. Um, I will say he's only has ten targets. But when they throw him a catchable ball, he makes the catch, I and he looks good. Completely agree. We said that in the, the offseason. Quote, the quote we have here is, he has hands. Right. He ha- that's, he can catch. He has hands. And we, he looks good doing it, in my opinion. Agreed. But he does not get in the targets. Yeah. So that doesn't help here. That doesn't. That's that's the caveat. That's basically what's separating him from these top, top-tier running backs. Completely agree. So, but, I mean, it's it's he's, he's young. He's a rookie. Baker Mayfield's young. He's a rookie. They're figuring this offense out. I think Baker's only going to get better. I think this offense is only going to get better. And I think everyone's only going to get better. So I think I we I agree with all that too. And Chubb's a rookie and he's twenty two years old and he's gotten he he even though we said time after time it's not as bad as it looks in the preseason, it he's gotten better each and every week and you can see it I mean, four games in a row with twenty twenty carries, you can see this man transitioning to the NFL speed he is NFL speed it's just the game everything opens up and closes so much faster it's just not an issue for him he, he's getting better each and every week and I completely agree with the way what you're trying to say there with this young rookie quarterback rookie running back new team basically they there's brought, room for improvement that's what I'm saying for and the I whole team will not only him but the team the sure. offense well obviously but I think I'm Nick Ford's Nick, Nick Chubb's PPR floor specifically I think has plenty of room to grow. And I don't want to just yeah. say he's not a pass catching back yet. He just hasn't gotten Well, it's just, there's there's you can catch the balls. There's there's you can, he has hands. That hashtag mm-hmm. you know, married to the game, he has hands, right? <laughs> but he's not a natural. Like 
Carry on Johnson's a natural. Like, he just hasn't been given the chance. They, well, well, there's a, all right. So there's Georgia a, didn't throw to their backs. You're okay. Then he had another good guy there. Uh, Auburn didn't really throw to their backs either. Carry on had a ton of catches. Well, because he's a natural. If you're, if he's, okay. a, you know, <laughs> like if you're, if you're a magnet to the football, when the quarterback's got it, they'll throw it to you. And he's not like Duke Johnson is there. That's his PPR ceiling and floor problems. Is Duke Johnson is there? Duke Johnson, natural pass catcher. But they're putting Duke in the slot and, 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 they and need working to. him around. They, need, they got wide receiver Riddick, issues. What they're doing over there, right? And they got so, they got wide receiver issues. They need to. All right, I'll take David Johnson and Le'Veon Bell over Nick Chubb. Yeah. What about Leonard and Fournette? That, let's just pause right there because somebody listening to this is going to be like, "Oh, I'll take Nick Chubb over Le'Veon Bell because Le'Veon Bell's got that stink on him." It's just hard. like first of all, if you drafted him this year. PPR, I mean, Bummer. PPR, Dynasty, Redraft, any of those, Anything. all of those above, you're upset and you are you got a little hate in your heart. So right. <laughs> it's just... If you have hate in your heart, let it out. Le'Veon Bell has just got you really upset with him right now in, in fantasy football. So, and I'm not mad at him personally. I don't know what's going on. And I don't, I've never been offered $17 million to do anything in my entire life and never will. Right. So I can't even relate. Right. And nor do I have to go get tackled by guys that want to rip my leg off on a consistent basis either. So I'm not going to pretend like I even know what's going on. I'm mm-hmm. just playing my game here and trying to do the best of my abilities. And if and I'm going to play Dynasty in the next three to five years. And and yeah, Nick, Le'Veon Bell's 26, Nick Chubb's 22. But again, Le'Veon Bell could get eight catches to this game and, catch, and get 100 yards rushing and get three total touchdowns. Nick Chubb, maybe two catches, maybe a, maybe a touchdown or two, hundred yards. You know, it's just there's that ceiling there that only a couple people in the league possess, and Le'Veon Bell's one of them. So even though Le'Veon Bell's a couple years older, and he's got me really upset fan, in fantasy terms right now, I'm still taking Le'Veon Bell over Nick Chubb going in. Uh, obviously, so rest if you of had the a season, bad team, Le'Veon Bell's going to give you zero. So if you had a bad team this year and you got Nick Chubb on it. And maybe a contender is sitting there with Le'Veon with no no nothing to do. Great call. I'm you maybe make that trade offer. You try it, and get Le'Veon Bell. Yes. You you send me Le'Veon Bell for Nick Chubb right now, and I don't have a chance to go to the playoffs where Nick Chubb can help me this year because obviously Le'Veon's not going to. Right. And I just, if this all about starting over next year and who's going to help me out the best, I'll take Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. I think I agree, and we're we're going down this list. So like w- these aren't these aren't our rankings. We're just calling them out as it goes down the DLF list here, right? Um, Trying to find somewhere to maybe stick Nick Chubb in because right now he's at fifteen, which to me it's just like the influx of the running back talent to push Nick Chubb all the way down to fifteen says something. Sure. Like, and this is exactly why we were trying to get all of our guys, listeners, guys and gals, listeners to hammer some running backs this year so you could have two or three of these guys because they're absolutely different you know they're difference, difference makers, makers for sure yeah um all right leonard fournette there's the difference for me right there obviously leonard fournette came back healthy this week and he got some he got five or six catches and the jags are like we and it's more of a product of anti blake bortles right that leonard fournette has five or six catches because they're like we don't want i that they did not want bortles to lose that game for them and there was just no chance they were going to put Bortles in harm's way. And it was Leonard Fournette, Leonard Fournette, Leonard Fournette. And he had a good game. He had a great game for stats-wise. He, you know, he, uh, the yards per carry. He accumulated some stats, if you will. And But it ended up being a great uh, fantasy day. I'm taking Nick Chubb over Fournette at this point. They do the same thing. They're b- both awesome pounders of the football. But give me the guy that just hasn't had these leg injuries carrying on for two years now you know they're he's got the ankle basically mm. the same age Fournette's a year older i is he yeah Fournette's 23 i mean it may by the months i'm just going by the numbers 8. here but just 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 hear me out for a second if the if the browns were in as bad of a spot as the jags were Fournette's like a whole year older than chubb okay holy shit if the browns were in a see they would have come out together Fournette didn't stay a senior year. They would have mm. come out together if Chubb didn't blow his knee out. Wow. Um, so they would be you so would, young still. Yeah. And Fournette would still obviously be a year older because that's how that works. And mm-hmm. we'd be talking about how great Chubb is and how young he is. But he blew his knee out and he didn't come out to this year. Um, if the Browns were in as bad a shape as the Jags are with quarterback, which they're not because he obviously just took Baker 1-1 and he's looking good. But if the Browns needed to force feed 
Chubb the ball even through the air to protect their quarterback situation because the defense is ready to cast Bortles off the team. The defense and the offense probably. Mm -hmm. Everybody not named Blake Bortles is ready to kick him off the team. And I'm sure he probably is like, like ah, just give me another couple checks. I'm out of here. You know, so... And but the problem for Nick Chubb is that he has Duke Johnson. So and Duke Johnson much better than TJ Yeldon at saying throw me the ball of a natural pass catcher. What I'm trying to say is, I'll take Chubb. In the meantime, in the short term, there's a, there's a chance that Fournette catches some balls and has a little PPR to him here because the Jaguars are so hell bent on keeping this quarterback from throwing interceptions. It's run, run, check down, run, run, check down, quarterback scramble, short crosser. And then, oh, we actually hit Dante Moncrief for a throw. So, and you know, I just feel like Chubb's just – what what have you done for me lately? Chubb's not been hurt. That's that's all. That's that, But I got to go with the guy that hasn't been – Leonard Fournette missed games last year. When he's on the field, he's awesome. And we have beat the drum for Leonard Fournette around here with everybody hating on Leonard Fournette. We've said we're, we are pro Leonard Fournette and I'm pro Leonard Fournette. But when you miss a half a season like this, you, it just cast out and when you just have to look out for your, obviously you have to look out for your starting lineup and putting points on the board for your fantasy team. But at the same time, it's kind of like the Alshon Jeffrey, Jeffrey effect, you know, there's half the guys in your league, no matter how good Al- Alshon Jeffrey catches on for the second half of the year, they wouldn't give you anything for him right. because they're scared of him because for two years he was on and off the question question mark tag and in and out of the lineup and this and that. Fournette's on that transit. He's on that path of the Alshon Jeffrey soft tissue, you know, and I said it last year, he's almost too big and too fast to be able to do what he does. Uh, you when know, he's doing it. When he's doing it for for his ankle, for, it's too much torque. And Casey, had, I remember that exact same conversation. I was kind of explaining that. And Casey comes over the top and is like, "He's so big and he's moving so fast, and and the left to right, even not only just north and south, left to right, too much torque on that ankle." And I'll just take I'll just take Nick Chubb because he's just been he's more solid right now, from head to toe. All right, we're we're running long on Nick Chubb here. But I want to do. I want to just get a couple more names out there. Would you take Nick Chubb over any of these guys? James Conner, Dalvin Cook, or Carry On? Woo! That's a list. I know. What a list! All right. So you told me I'm running long. I'm all. I'm taking Carry On over Chubb, and that might be hot. Um, I'm just fairly hot. Same thing. Same thing. Just a natural. It's a PPR game for me, and Chubb. Couple more points and chick then uh carry on this week and carry on barely got the ball. If the Lions got a pass interference in the end zone, it was first and goal. Like Garrett Blunt stuffed two times in a row, third and goal. They bring in carry on Johnson. He jumps over the pile in the end zone. And hopefully the coaches are like, you know what? This is ridiculous. Let's just carry on's a monster in the red Maybe zone. They just wanted to Give burn the some ball. time by there was there it was four and Garrett Blunt getting nothing. Right. Just burning the t- yeah, yeah, so that so the Bears offense couldn't come back on and embarrass him again. I can see that. It's a good point. <laughs> Fourth All and right, two, Blunt, go out there and get nothing. Fourth and two, they do a toss, a little pitch to the left. Carry on, takes it to towards the side. There's somebody in the backfield. As soon as he pitches it, and he breaks a tackle, gets a first down. It's third down, running towards somebody in the in the back in the backfield again, trying to blow the play up. He he strings it all the way out to the to the sideline and just shoots upfield at the last second to get the first down. This dude's a monster. I'm taking the, I'm taking carry on over Chubb, but you can't go wrong with either one of them. Chubb is Chubb, Chubb's 22, carry on 21, even younger. Um, not that that really matters when you're in low twenties, but just to, just to say, uh, Dalvin Cook, um, you want to talk about the Leonard Fournette, Alshon Jeffrey, soft tissue for you know effect. Dalvin Cook is w- w- wavering in some people's eyes, not in mine. I said it last week. I think this might have been on the Patreon show. Maybe it was on the public show. They've Latavius Murray was supposed to be the fifty fifty split for the Vikings this year because he played well down the stretch when Dalvin Cook got hurt. When week one got here, Dalvin Cook was on the field. Bang, Dalvin Cook show. The Vikings, know, it was pass to Dalvin Cook, run with Dalvin Cook, pass to Dalvin Cook, run with Dalvin Cook. It's going to be the Dalvin Cook show when he's back out there for sure. Oh, but but uh, Latavius is going to be the goal line back because why would they switch up what they've been doing? <laughs> yeah, get out of my face with I like Latavius that Joe Murray. Public you got going on over there. Like, uh, this is what you do with Latavius Murray. You wait a few weeks, 
when Dalvin Cook starts crushing and he's not to be found, Latavius Murray, that is. I know where you're going with this. Because Dalvin like is just crushing because yep. Dalvin's a man, and I think you should go try and get as much Dalvin as you can right now. If you take away that 70-yard carry, uh, his yards per carry wasn't very good last week. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck? Are you serious? You're going to de- negate the 70-yard carry yeah. to give me yards per carry. That's what's on Twitter. Yeah. That's why I don't go on Twitter. But you wait three weeks, and then you go buy Latavius real cheap because he's probably not going to be a Viking next year. Real cheap. He's on the end of his just a one two year deal. He's out. Okay, probably won't be around. But then he could go somewhere else and be a decent little back. So wait a couple weeks, then go buy Latavius Murray. Right now, go pounce on Dalvin Cook. And I'm with and, you. and I got a little nice little buyer's window conspiracy here for a second. I got a little theory because they go play at Chicago this week, the worst field in the league. Um, Soldier Field, not great, worst in the league. Chicago, maybe the best defense in the league against running backs. So, And I do believe that Dalvin Cook will have enough catches this week for people to realize he's a PPR monster. But if for any chance you are given one more week of buy window for Dalvin Cook, just consider yourself lucky right? and pounce if you can. Pounce now if you can. If right. you can. Yeah. Like, we've been telling our – we we said this last week. We've, had our, we've helped a handful of guys on our Patreon show and our members through the chats and the – and the question and answer portion of things acquire some Dalvin Cook. And if you if you didn't see the seventy yard run and you're just going by what somebody says, if if somebody says, well, it was blocked well and he wasn't touched, just go watch it. You can go get a clip of it. I'm sure you can find it somewhere on YouTube if you don't have Game Pass to pull it up. If you can't see the vision that Dalvin Cook had in the the zero hesitation. The ball hits his hands from staff from from uh, not Stafford but Kirk Kirk with a K hard K hard K he he gets the ball in his hands and this man is the definition of shot out of a cannon through this hole and it's just a minor weave because it is good blocking I'm not saying it's not good blocking it was a good hole but there was zero hesitation and it was shot out of a cannon to the term to the definition picture of Dalvin Cook in the dictionary beside him bang he's gone. And he's out of here. And a good angle from the safety coming across the field kept him out of the end zone, or it would have been one of those highlight plays that you saw over and over, Nick, over and over again. So, I would, I'm, I'm, it's a hard call, but I'm, t- I'm, I'm taking Dalvin Cook over Chubb. Yeah. The last one. Go ahead. You want to ha- uh, hammer the Dalvin Cook thing for a second? I mean, I don't, I don't need to hammer anything, but I think I just like Nick Chubb better than Dalvin Cook, and There's so I think I, I think I'd take my Dalvin share, and I think I'd go trade. For Nick Chubb, if I could, I think I'd make that trade straight up. I don't think you'd have to. What well, maybe? I don't know. I don't know that I could right now. I, honestly, I don't think that the sentiment out there for Dalvin Cook isn't that strong. Like I don't understand why. Well, because it's always what you do last week. Recency bias. I got it. That's just how. That's the world we live in. But you know, Dalvin Cook NFL. was no stranger to injuries in college or some other off the field issues that I didn't necessarily like. I looked past all that and I was in for him. You know, I jumped on the train very late last year. Right, took before me forever the to get you on the train. Right before the preseason started, and you know, and now I'm, I'm I traded a substantial amount to go get him uh, while he's still cheap in uh, in one dynasty league. And I, I love the guy. I mean, I like to watch him play. He's he's a phenomenal runner, and he's, he's like just so better. electric. I think I just feel it in my plums <laughs> <laughs> i think i'd take nick chubb but i can't argue with you okay i can't argue with you well there's a two there's a two pick gap here if, if and by, carry on i think i take chubb over carry on too just because of this by the average i can't here, trust the lions to ever run the damn ball or do what's right oh i didn't say that in the meantime in the next couple of weeks the lions are going to do what they need to do to give the ball to carry on I, you know, I, I, we'll see. There's, there's a, it's a lot safer. You got a lot better chance of Nick Chubb to get 20 total carries next week than you do of carry on to get 15 carries and five targets. But if you look at the game log on carry on, he's getting the targets every week. His lowest targets are like Chubb's best. And again, PPR, carry on's just a stud. It, the Lions are a mess. And hopefully they use the last rest of the season to try to find their bright spots and carry on the bright carry on and, and Kenny Galladay. Mm-hmm. They're only two bright spots at this point. Right. Um, and as bad as it is, the, the Lions need to shore up some things over there this week because they've gotten to Stafford's been absolutely pummeled. He's gotten sacked like 16 times in the last two weeks. And you, you want to talk about a bright spot. Like one of the bright spots for the Lions is they don't absolutely have to have a quarterback. 
And if they don't start protecting this man, that might not be the case anymore. Um, so what last name in that trio you gave me before we get out, you, we get out of here on the Nick Chubb is you said, uh, James Connor. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be real hot probably, but I got to keep Connor over Chubb and it's, there's Chubb obviously came into the league as a much more heralded touted, uh, touted back. We, and when I say we, I mean us, but really Casey brought us James Connor last year before really the world knew who he was. We got Casey got on here last February and told us about the stats and the rushing rates and, and the, and the touchdown rates that James Connor was putting up before he got sick in college that were on par with the Melvin Gordons of the world and the JGIs when he was crushing things at Boise state and all that good stuff. James Connor, if he had not gotten sick, would have come into the league as a much more touted back. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Chubb, but he did and he didn't. And he's here and now, and he's Le'Veon's given us this opportunity to see bell. I mean, to see Connor. And now that we've seen Connor be a much above average NFL running back in maybe the best spot outside of the Rams, maybe even better than the Rams. Gurley just looks at, makes it look like that good because the, the fact yeah, they don't even give it to him as many they as should many ride him even more right yeah. and and so but the Steelers throw it to Connor they throw it to Bell they throw it to D'Angelo Williams three years ago like there was a stat on 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 Twitter the other day and we don't need the stat because we've been playing fantasy football and we just know but it's good to see it like this the last five years the Steelers have had a top five running back in in fantasy it's been Le'Veon Bell three times and the year he got hurt it was D'Angelo Williams and then this year it's Connor because Le'Veon Bell's not there. The Steelers just it's fantasy football teat and they're milking it for running backs. Yeah. And it's the easiest job in the game. It's the easiest fantasy football points to get in the game. Solid the offensive Steelers line running back. Annually. Exactly. Ben Roethlisberger, Big one ben, of the greats. A B Antonio Brown and Juju. And Juju now. Yeah. yeah. It's just too easy. There's too many pieces. There's too many moving parts that are too good. And there's like you said, bare, there's just one percent chance Le'Veon is a Steeler next year. Maybe not. Probably even not one. even that. Probably so, not even that. I'll take Connor too. Yeah, just I'll stick with it. It's at this point. Excuse me. I like Chubb more as a runner, but I think I, I got to take James Connor for the for the production. Right. Exactly. It just if you put Chubb on the Steelers, right, it's magic. Right. But Connor's there, and he's getting he's that magic right now. All right. Well, real quick before we go to break, let's go to this other counterpart. This backfield, this Browns backfield, little Duke Johnson, he's coming alive. He was left for dead at the beginning of the season, not doing anything for you. They fire the coach. They fire the offensive coordinator. They promote the running backs coach. All of a sudden, Duke Johnson starts to get a little bit of work. Uh, didn't do too much uh, week seven and eight versus Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh, but the last two weeks against Kansas City and Atlanta, pretty solid output. Helps you out with a couple touchdowns. Two touchdowns versus Kansas City. Catches nine balls. It's a ton of balls to catch. Looking at the <laughs> stats, he's got 1.32 uh, points per opportunity, which is good for 11th best among running backs in the NFL. He's just not getting that many opportunities. Sure. We've been bringing him up on this show. We've been, we brought up Nick Chubb several times. I don't know if it was maybe on Patreon or not, but we've been saying go try and acquire. I, I have at least been trying to say go acquire some Duke Johnson. I've been trying to get him in some of my leagues. Uh, but, you know, that window is slowly closing to to buy low on Nick Chubb, or sorry, Duke Johnson, if it hasn't already slammed shut with a couple of solid uh, games here. Uh, the elusive rating is is great. It's like seventh best in the league. Uh, it doesn't have as many opportunities as these these other backs that are in that category. So the overall tackles broken isn't sure. the hugest number, biggest number. But but the elusive rating on on broken tackles per opportunity is great. Just like the points yeah. that he's getting per opportunity is awesome. I think that uh, the Browns' offense is on the up. I think they're young. They're going to grow. He's paid. He's not going anywhere. Uh, it seems like him and Baker are getting on the same page. Baker seems to be getting better and better every week. You know, I don't can't give up a one to get Duke Johnson, but I mean, I'd I'd be down to give up a two all day. I don't know that that's going to get it done though. I mean, it could, and it probably 
probably should unless you're super deep and you got to start a bunch of positions like you got we got that 16 man league you're talking about you've been starting duke all year because you had some injuries in a 16 man league right um the pro, like the points per opportunity and when you're playing ppr and you got a guy who doesn't get a lot of rushing attempts it's always going to be a solid ratio if he can catch the ball and that's obviously duke johnson so uh, again the theme here is not enough opportunity for mm-hmm. duke johnson on the season right now he's got 26 carries i just ain't going to cut it that's like one good game. That's like a beastly game, but it's taken him 10 to get there. So it's, that's what's making you pull your hair out. But not even last year when he was a back-end RB1 were you living on the attempts. It was the catches that was crushing. And he's, you know, like you said, just was left to, for dead to start the season. And the coming out party was against the Chiefs. I just mentioned this a minute ago when we were talking about Chubb was they were chasing the Chiefs, right? So he gets nine catches, and obviously the two touchdowns are just glorious. But this week, they're up. It was a close game, back and forth, low scoring for the first half. But then once they got that turnover, put it in the end zone, and then Chubb broke that 90-yarder, they're not chasing the Falcons anymore. So that's yeah, he got your touchdown, but it's four catches for 31 yards. Like That's the problem. You would imagine that the Browns are behind more than they're in front. Obviously, you catch the Dome team, Atlanta, On the road, they had just got a nice victory the week before on the road against the Washington Redskins. Played their best game of the year, maybe, the Atlanta did. And then they come over here and just get slapped up by the Browns. Get handled by the Browns. I won't Mm -hmm. say they got slapped up until the end of the game. But, you know, that's if if the if the Browns aren't chasing the Chiefs every week, where does Duke's catches come from? Do do they need him in the slot more? Sure. Do they have Jarvis Landry? Yeah, but it would be in my eyes a really good thing for this team to try to utilize both at the same time because they are really looking for weapons all of a sudden where they come into the league coming to the season where you remember that stat about the Browns with like six players in the top hundred for ADP for, you know, dynasty that maybe Mm -hmm. it was five, but I think it might've been six, but either way that's still, they had the most players in the top hundred of any team. And in Joku's hit and miss right now, he's still 22 years old. One of the best, youngest tight ends in the league with maybe the most upside, you know, physically, but just up here and there with the targets. Jarvis Landry's not here right this second with the completions. The targets are there still, but it's really been hit or miss for a couple weeks here with the, with the uh, getting things going with the new offensive coordinator, at least with the old offensive coordinator, the targets were plenty and the completions were there too for your PPR floor. Uh, it's just, I've, I like where your head's at with the acquiring Duke Johnson cheap because when you first said to something to me today, I was like, yeah, I'd take if – the, if the worst team in the league wanted to offer me a second-round pick, if I could get that quote-unquote early second for Duke, I said I would take it so I could do something with that early second round because immediately in my mind I'm thinking, well, that's where you could got the Anthony Millers of the world this year going into the draft, mm-hmm. something like that. But – then Which you, you weren't taking Anthony Miller, but I mean I'm taking yeah. running backs. But you, uh, yeah, after the case, after the fact, it's, you know hindsight's twenty twenty. I mean, you, sure I can pick out the guys now, right? But you're not going to get Anthony Miller because you don't want to take a running back or a wide receiver. I still want to take running backs, so no doubt about it. But the thing is, you so don't tell me you're going to get Anthony Miller. You got two one because you're not a young quarterback, a young team, a young running back, and Duke still he's not old. Mm-mm. There is, uh, I think, there's enough room for improvement. Twenty five in this situation. To I probably it would probably be better for you to hold Duke than get even the early second round pick. Um, and my I lot play a lot of short bench FFPC league, so in my in my eyes a circ, an early second round pick is different because not only you got the it's the startability factor with Duke Johnson is frustrating. That's all it. Nobody doesn't nobody minds having Duke Johnson on their team. Everybody likes to see Duke Johnson on their roster. Just when it times to put him in their lineup, to me it's just pulls your hair out. You know, obviously, if you look at turn good, though, it may hopefully recency bias. Hopefully, it's not two weeks in a row. Yes, the good recency, but the bad recency is eight weeks of man. I hope I didn't got I didn't start this guy not one time. No, you know, a couple games where he had four catches. What one game? All right, one game he had four catches for seventy three yards, and he got over ten points. But that might be the only ten point game he had all year. So it's just been. Really bad over there for Duke, but I get I see what you're saying, and I just wanted to make sure we covered that tonight. Um, was even the recent bump of success for Duke Johnson? If you have somebody coming over the top for Duke Johnson, and he's been killing you on the bench, I don't mind selling Duke Johnson, but I don't want you to sell him low. You know, given the old 
sell low, this is a little bit of a bump, so maybe you're selling high. I, I get what you mean by it's a lot of room for improvement for the entire offense. And Duke Johnson's a really, really good football player. I know, and every week Hugh Jackson was saying, we need to get him more work. We need to get him more work. We need to get him more work. No more work was ever <laughs> given to him. And now he's getting a little more work. Yeah. And he's startable. Yeah. So I'd still be get, I'd still be trying to get in there. I, I have the good visions of Duke Johnson, and it's definitely not his fault. So, no. no. I and I like the talent, and that's not. what this game is about, right? It's about getting something before it becomes better than what it is. Yeah. But it's also anyway. about opportunity. And if you don't get it, then you're not getting fancy points. But you got to try and figure out when he might get that opportunity. Well, he just signed an extension. He's going to play behind Nick Chubb and with Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry's paid. Nick Chubb's a rookie on a, a deal, and it's not going anywhere for three years. And Duke Johnson ain't going anywhere for three years. So unless somebody gets very creative over there. Well, why are they going to pay him this money if they're not going to use him? Well, that's the Chinese riddle, Jay Wayne. Well, he got fired. Right. Coach got the fired. GM didn't didn't pay him though, and the GM didn't get fired. The GM didn't pay him. Well, no, no, the coach didn't new, pay him. The GM pays him. The well, GM but, but the current GM didn't pay him. Is that what you're saying? No, they did that in the off season. It's the current okay. GM. Okay, yeah, the current GM paid him. Right, and maybe that's why some of the coaches got fired too, is because I got a, I got Nick Chubb over here, and I got Duke Johnson paid, and Use you're not them. using either one of them. Right. All right. I, I can hold Nick Chubb for the for the cheap second Duke rounder. Johnson. That yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. I All can, right, I cannot sell Duke Johnson. I got him off it. in a deep bench league. Off air, he's like, oh, you can have him. You Short, can have him for that two, that two one. Let me get him. Short bench league, I'll take the two one. Yeah, I still will. I can't. You can't. It's killing me. It's killing me. Yeah, I just can't even start the guy. Start over. Slate clean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna take a break here. We'll come back after the break. Start clean. clean start slate. Clean. We'll be back with more married to the game. We're back. That was a weak crack. Wasn't the best crack. Hit and miss. Yeah, we do it live. What are we about to get into here? A little Zay Jones? A little, lev- a little levitation? Zay Jones? Remember that? Remember when he levitated off the ground? Like he, he just picked himself up backwards off the ground? You remember that? That was no. last year? Missed it. You missed that? Yeah. For real? What are you talking you about? You got to check it out. Just Google it. Send me the YouTube link. YouTube it. Send me the Zay link. Jones levitation. Yeah. You will not believe your eyes. Okay. It looks fake. Did it really happen? Yeah. I mean, I might have to do this while we're talking. <laughs> Maybe. You ask me a question and I'll get going. That's what I do. I ask you a question. I know you're just going to go on and on. I go <laughs> you got do time. some research. How much time pay do you some need, bills. buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Online banking. Pay right. the mortgage. How much time you got, buddy? Get some things lined up. Right. Make a couple investments. <laughs> Pick a guy up off the waiver. Uh, <laughs> the so, guy we were probably just talking about. So Zay Jones, you've you've uh, picked him up off a couple waivers the last couple weeks. I have. You've been on here for a couple weeks, telling everybody. Is was it mostly on the Patreon or was it live? I think show? so. I I don't know how many times I've gotten it in. I got it in a couple times. We mm-hmm. throw so much content out there. I can't keep what's straight. That's why you need to go to Patreon. Make sure you're getting got to get everything. Got to get both. We got to offer. For I mean, sure. literally for five bucks a month or more if you'd like to. Um, one of our guys hit us up this week and and increased his pledge. Double for, down, double down from five to ten bucks a month. And I sent him a message and told him we how much we really appreciate it. And uh, he hit me back and said, you know, I drive a long way for work, and you guys are one of the reasons that helps me keep my sanity in the car. And that just makes you feel good. You know right. what I mean? Like it, it's it's pretty cool that we're not. I'm trying. We're trying to help you with your dynasty team, but at the same time, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We have a good time, and we're just just get, getting it in we're just getting it in and, and we appreciate um each and every one of you appreciate you giving it you know clicking for the downloads but um at the end of the day the uh the people that come over and join the fam and the patreon side of things they they're helping contribute to the bottom line and and just keep this thing uh, going helping showing the appreciation more than you know just saying we appreciate it taking the it like i, I say this all the time as a joke but i it really for five bucks a month, it probably is a bigger hassle to get your card out and to log on to Patreon and get started and set your account up. And the ten minutes is going to take you to do that. I, I, we know that's basically a bigger hassle that's, than five bucks. That's a way bigger hassle than five bucks. You 10 can't minutes. go into anywhere and not spend five bucks. Right. You can't buy ten Starbucks, minutes for five dollars. Right. Ten five. You know. So, what well, you don't have to do that every month. That's the cool thing about it. It just it's set it up five bucks a month. Hang out with us. Set on it. Patreon. Forget it. Set it and forget it. 
It's like Alvin Kamar in your lineup. Or a couple of dollars more. These guys, you know, got a couple guys that really, you know. No, let's not get greedy. Uh, no, no, no greed. No <laughs> greed. Just just help helping us, showing the appreciation because we, we really hope that you guys are enjoying it and we want to keep the good times rolling. Absolutely. And we made this statement like if if something happens and we're just like, all right, you know, and we don't want the 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 Patreon thing has been a huge success for us. The momentum's there. And when that type of momentum is getting built, it makes it fuels our fire a little bit. Right. But if there comes a time where we're like, all right, well, this, you know, is not necessarily enough meat on the bone financially to continue trading this much time out of our lives so to do much this. Time. To trading that time to do this. Everybody that signed up with Patreon, whether you made whether from the time you sign up to the time we sign off, anybody that signs up and sticks with us, it's getting a, getting the t shirt. You know, sure. and for, and, and basically, at that point, you probably just turn into a mailing list where you still email me if you need anything because right. uh, we're loyal dudes. Right. Like, if for something happens and we and this thing shuts down, like, anybody that's on the Patreon list, we're going to stay. You, you need me, you send me an email. It's, right. It's going to continue the way it's doing now. It just won't be through that website because that's just how we are. We're not going to... You, you you did your part to try to help us keep going. And if, another, if enough people don't jump on the train to help us keep going and we have to just call this thing one day... Then everybody that's on Patreon, they're gonna they're gonna continue to have they're gonna be tapped in. Sure. Not that you care to be tapped in because it got some bad information flowing every once in a while, but everybody, you know, you're not nobody's you know, undefeated out here. I know. We uh I went I came on here last week and was like, Oh, go buy Matt Mike Williams because it's pretty soon it's gonna not be <laughs> you're not gonna be able to. And he comes out and puts an offer and the donut. Oh, the YouTube comments start coming in. Oh, ha, ha, that's a tough week for you, ha, ha, LOL. <laughs> I'm like, you really laughing out loud, Bubba? Okay. <laughs> he LOL People just throw you. LOLs out there. Sure, sure. For no good reason. I mean, it's, it's fantasy football. It happens in the NFL. You uh, never people know just what's like to happen. comment. That's okay. Comment. That helps drive traffic to the to the page if you want to yeah. get it out. Sometimes I feel like people don't even watch the videos. They just read the title and answer it. Yeah. Which that's fine, too. That's fine, too. Probably still getting a click. Still getting a download. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But that good click, the click that matters if you go to the, the ffdynasty.com. It's really easy though. FFDynasty.com. So T H E F F Dynasty.com is easy as it gets. Um, and right there in the middle of the page, all the way to the right, become a patron. You click that box, boom, takes you right to the right link. Five minutes later, you're in the five dollar holler sa section and you're uh, you know, getting the good stuff. The good stuff. The t shirt, the extra content, the access to us, all the questions you could you could ask. They, people getting it in, man, every day. There's just a bunch of comments. Bunch oh, we got trade. We uh, we got trade talk galore. We got uh, we got out the wazoo. We got more trade talk than I could have ever imagined, and I just love every bit of it. Love Big everybody. Oh, it's all about. He's in this for the trading. I'm in it for the trade. <laughs> Always. I'm in it for the trade negotiation. I'm living vicariously through some Patreon members right now. Right. I think I said. Ooh, you got who for what? Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel like you did. Yeah, exactly. Right. I, I did. I made a comment earlier to somebody. I think I actually typed it into the Patreon uh, answering somebody's question about Dalvin Cook about what just basically what I said earlier about how this week going to the Bears, if it doesn't work out great for him, then there's gives us another week of buy low window. And I think I typed in there, I have enough of him on my teams to I can concede a buy low window so all my other buddies can catch up on here. And because we have helped so many people get Dalvin Cook in the last two weeks on Patreon, I felt like I didn't even notice that I typed that like that until afterwards and I reread it and I'd already submitted it. I didn't have I don't have Dalvin Cook on all my teams. I got him on enough, but not enough enough. I'd rather have more him on him on all my teams. But because I've been helping we've been helping these people get Dalvin Cook, I felt like I had him on more mm -hmm. teams. I'm right. you know, I'm part of this. Right. I'm I'm on this train. Right. So it's been a good time. You guys that are not on pay, on Patreon you're missing out for the value that you're getting for your five bucks unheralded. Or a couple more dollars if you want to throw us our way. You know, you, we'll take a couple miles, you take a couple miles. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys just stop talking? Right. <laughs> That's what he says. D yeah. uh, Dwight, Dwight Yoakum. Yoakum. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm gonna know who Dwight Yoakum of is. <laughs> we will bring a little Dwight on the after show. I don't know. We'll get Two weeks in a row with uh, with no rap for Big Co's pleasure. So I mean, the five dollars alone is enough to catch me accidentally bursting into country music song last week. <laughs> you know, let's not discourage anyone here. Right, we don't want to turn you away, <laughs> but Jay Wayne played some instrumentals and there was no songs with it, and I had to just pick it up. And I'll, I'll try and make sure that there's some lyrics this week for you guys. All right, <laughs> you don't want Big Co singing. That did not go well. All right, Zay Jones, Zay my name, Zay my name. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So this is a guy, 
if you followed this show all the way back to, you know, years past, last year I was pretty high on Zay Jones coming out of college. How could you not be? Really like well, what I saw from Well, I mean, there was, some, there was some haters. But oh, well, he's a compiler. We were we were big on the Zay Jones. I don't understand. I'm a, I hate bringing this dude's name up, but Matt Kelly, he doesn't like Zay Jones. And I don't know why, because if you look at his player profiler page, those the numbers jump up like a dang video game. The, the, the little bars of all the metrics, they just pew, 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 shoot up. Well, his, his, oh, well, he's a compiler. That's because Matt Kelly's game is picking somebody out of the. He wants to find a really good athlete that can he can say is really good that actually didn't do anything. So when he does blow up, he can say, "Hey, that was my guy." That's his game. We get it. I've seen it, but I've seen it played out many, many times. But the funny thing is, is to me, is like somebody that he likes. The player profile comp is of a stud. Like mm-hmm. if he likes a guy, it comps out to be DeAndre Hopkins. Mm-hmm. But if he doesn't like a guy, it comps out to be a guy that played like three snaps thirty years ago. It's so funny the way he manipulates the way that that comp, the actual true yeah. comp. Of Guess who Zay Jones's comp is? Trey McBride. Right. Who is Trey yeah. McBride? You don't even. But know. type in somebody very similar that he likes. Right. And all of a sudden, I mean, who's Richie James's comp? Or somebody like that that he just oh he's you know the next great one uh, Jerry Rice no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding uh, who is it let's see Ted Ginn eh. okay well I just picked Richie Ted James Ginn. I don't know if he likes Richie he ain't James that or not. fast I don't know if he likes Richie James or not I was just he trying must to not. find I was just trying to think of a guy he Jerry he's, Rice <laughs> he's a big no name guy if he if he jumps well and yeah. has a good broad jump and he runs fast and he's going to be a Matt Kelly guy until he does good well. Although he hates Zay Jones, that's not the only reason that I like Zay Jones. Right. It is a plus. It does help. Um, but, I mean, just back to the college game, he caught so many balls. 399. Mm-hmm. Or was it 499? 399. I want to make sure I got that right. 399 balls. Jeez. He lines up all over the field, left, right, slot. He can make. Circus one-handed catches. He was. I thought he was a willing blocker. I liked his work ethic. He comes from an NFL football family, so loved all these things. Had the had the draft pedigree. I think it was a second round pick. Second second round pick. Boom. And so I, I was excited about this guy. I mean, he's fast. He's agile. He's got burst. And I well, like. What else are you looking for in a prospect? You know. Mm-hmm. And then he just hasn't quite got it together up to this point. He had the terrible off season. But the Bills stuck with him. I thought that was a huge win yeah, for him, a yeah. huge vote of confidence. Had the problem in the hotel room. Right. Thought it was a cigarette. Oh, turned out, boy. Turned out it was the LSD pill or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think it was probably some fake marijuana or yeah, something. Something like that. Some uh, K2, mm. as the kids, the spice, as the kids like to call Just it. Just get the real stuff. Okay? Right. Uh, so, But he's really been coming on lately. Uh, very strong. He had a, a pretty good game in week 11. And he seems what he what he was doing in college is finally starting to translate into the NFL, right? You see him lining up all over the field, both sides. You see him in the slot. He's got 189 routes ran out of the slot, which is about 55 percent of his snaps. So, I mean, half his snaps are in the slot. The other half are all over the place. They're sending him in motion a lot. Like you see him coming across the formation. You see him shifting uh, before the, the the play snaps. And they're manufacturing some short looks for him, right? Which is, to me, establishing a bit of a PPR floor here. Sure. Uh, he seems to be running a variety of routes. There's the short intermediate outs and whips. He turned what looked like a shallow cross into a deep corner or something. I'm not really sure what they call that route, but he had Buster Screen all turned around. Mm-hmm. Had a huge 33-yard catch uh, last week in that game. He was working Screen all day. Uh, he burned him on his TD catch. Uh, got past him, sat down between two defenders. Uh, Matt Barkley threw a really good low ball. He went down and dug it out, got the score. And it just it just seems like he's he's coming along. Now, he's not perfect. He's still making some young mistakes. Made a bonehead play uh, where he ran a nice little whip route, caught it, got the first down, and he was like three yards from the end zone and decided to try and dive. Well, there's three NFL defenders right there. You're not... You're not gonna. It's not gonna work, right? <laughs> so they they cause a fumble because that's what they get paid to do. And uh, luckily for the Bills, they got the fumble recovery in the end zone for the touchdown. Right. Uh, and then there was an. But like, come on, man! You don't need to be 
what are you doing? Don't he's, die for that. He's right? caught up in the moment. He is. He's caught up. He's young. He's still raw. You know, mm-hmm. he's still he's still putting it together. And then there's another play a little bit later in that game, I think, where he he kind of he ran an out route for a completion, but it was one yard f- short of the first down. I don't know if, if on third and nine you got an eight yard play plan and you want to get one yard a yak or I don't know what if he made the mistake or what he's got a brand new quarterback back there with him. I don't know if that's necessarily a mistake or his right. or not, but it turned into fourth and one. Yeah. I think they got a false start or something. Fourth and six, they Bums miss a fifty away. yard miss a fifty four yard field goal. Okay, uh, so you know I. You know, but he bounced back from that. He comes back, has, has, finds a nice spot in the zone to convert a, convert a first down on the next possession. So you, you see him out there doing good things. He was really good against the zone in, in college. He's really good at working that short, intermediate stuff, compiling catches. And that's that's what I'm looking for from an NFL player that's not, you know, I'm not saying this guy's going to be a number one dude, but sure. he has a PPR floor that I think could be very valuable for your fantasy team. Well, first of all, sign me up for a compiler. Right. Give me Why somebody. Is that a bad thing. Sign me up for somebody that's so good that their college team thinks they need to throw it to him every play. It's only so, bad if you say it like this. He's a compiler, right? Then exactly. it sounds only, bad. Yeah. But if you say he's a compiler, <laughs> you're like, oh shit, yeah. I love it. I love it. The inflection is everything. Tone, man. Yeah, I love it. So sign me up for the guy who whose team thinks they need to give it to him every time they get a chance to, to give them the best chance to win the game. Right. Sign me up for that guy. Here's say Jones' biggest problem so far. He's a Buffalo Bill. <laughs> okay so that's true that's what's wrong uh, with zay jones that's true a freshman year you know rookie year in the nfl not so hot he's a buffalo bill what can you but do they got tyrod he's not interested in passing a ton no he's, he's not all about game. throwing the ball shady's just sustaining drives the defense is playing well they make the playoffs he's, right he's the, the the deep ball wasn't on par for for uh to t- rod to rod to run, right, uh, that's, that's his name. Last year, it seemed it seemed a little off, and there was people were just crushing Zay Jones because he was getting targets and couldn't catch any of them. Yeah, but like these balls were out of bounds. These, most of these balls were uncatchable. Like, yeah. quit knocking this dude right. for not being able to catch an uncatchable ball. <laughs> true, true. But no, the, the haters are out there. Yeah, for sure, haters are thick. So Zay Jones, the Buffalo Bill, tough to get consistent, quality, catchable targets. It is. He could be the next Robert Woods. He could be the next guy that gets out of Buffalo and goes to really flourish in a team that can successfully throw the ball in a catchable area. Does he need to leave Buffalo to be successful? I'm not saying he does. I'm not saying it's going to take four years to get him out of there and and find a new team before he's actually successful. I don't think he needs to leave Buffalo either. I mean, they're in a tough spot this year, right? They're all so tough. And Josh Allen looked, looked decent. He looked showing promise. Josh Allen's promise is mostly in his thread of his cannon cannon and his running like josh allen the best thing for for zay jones right now is matt barkley has been in the been in the league for almost 10 years now or however many years long time veteran backup and he knows how to get in there and complete a pass and there was a guy on twitter i forget who it was now but he was like, watch out for Zay Jones this week because Matt Barkley is all about the slot receiver and he's going to pepper him with targets. And that's kind of what happened. Um, it was against a Jets team who just cannot get out of their own way right now. So I wouldn't look for that. Maybe next week again. Um, but once the, if Barkley – I think they're in a bye week this week. They, I, are they not in a bye week this week? Um I'll I could that up right quick. My bad. I, I'm pretty sure they're going into the bye and they expect maybe – um, Josh Allen to play the week after, uh, but yeah, I think you're right. So whether they're in a buy or not, yeah, the Bills are on a buy. Okay, Bills, Browns, Dolphins, Patriots, Jets, 49ers. Whew. Right, most of the yeah, okay, Six a lot of, of NFC East teams. That's what I was thinking. So you can't play Zay Jones this week on a buy. Next week, Matt Barkley is probably on the bench. Josh Allen's in there, and I don't look for those consistent catchable targets. It's just a situation thing. So here we are in Dynasty Fantasy Football playing the game that we are here to play. And Zay Jones, while he has, you know, one nice real one real nice game here, eight for ninety three and a touch. Zay you, you know Jason's been doing all he could do to tell you the last month. Casey too. Casey brought him up and was like Look out for Zay Jones. He, he right. brought him up a while ago right. this season. And but I remember you recently saying, Hey, I've been giving this guy off all my <laughs> waiver wires. You know. I basically it, moved on from Kelvin Benjamin and picked up Zay Jones. That's where I had to cut ties with there all you the go. lies. You gotta do what you gotta do. 
and grab this PPR floor gotta and make get rid of this treasure. Got to make big boy decisions. Right. And and Zay Jones is a really nice pickup right now. He's the flavor of the week, but we got to think about how the NFL plays out. Obviously, I on a bye week can catch zero passes this week because that's funny. And then the next week, Josh Allen comes back in there. Don't look for him to tear it up. So if you'd picked him up in the last month, like Jay Wayne and Casey was telling you to, fantastic. If you can pick him up right now, still on the cheap because he's Zay Jones and he plays for Buffalo Bills, fantastic. Mm-hmm. And if somebody right now is kind of squeezing on to him because he just had eight for 93 in a touch, and that's the way people play fantasy football, yep. then in two weeks, let's revisit this conversation because that's what, you know, I I, I would be willing to bet money he doesn't come anywhere close to eight for 93 in a touch when Josh Allen's back in there in the first week. And I would be, that my point was that I was going to say was, I'll be willing to bet money that once Matt Barkley had two, if he continued to play, if Josh Allen really does have that bad arm situation, that's the coaches are thinking he's going to come back. When it originally happened, they were talking about maybe Tommy John or something, and he doesn't play for two years. So I don't know when to actually expect Josh Allen back. But if Matt Barkley played for two or three games, it's just like every other backup quarterback. When you got a quarterback change that comes in, you don't. The defense doesn't. The, the Jets even said this week that the defense on the Jets, they're like, we didn't really plan for Barkley too much. So they didn't go back and look through the tape of Barkley's best games to see where he liked to throw the ball. If Barkley was to quarterback this team for two or three more games, I bet the defense would figure out, okay, he likes to throw it to Zay Jones, you know, uh, and try to make it harder on him. But the Jets did nothing to make it hard on the Bills this game. So you don't want to get stuck in this one-week window and go pay too much for Zay Jones right now. While we're telling you to get Zay Jones, the reason we want you to get Zay Jones is because you got to pay minimal for him. And if you if somebody that actually has him right now wants to squeeze a little too tight, let's play it in the two- or three-week window going forward, and I bet that grip will loosen up in a week or two. Yeah, I don't I don't know that anyone's squeezing too tight. So, I mean, I think he's he could probably acquire him fairly easy. And so Josh Allen has been practicing. Roto World says he's going to – play week 12 so okay he must because they're always right uh but it looks like it anyway that was a joke but it, it looks like uh josh allen's coming back but i mean looking at the targets for the first six weeks of the season for zay jones which is when josh allen was in there it was six three one against minnesota which they just went in there and slapped them boys up right didn't need to throw the ball i guess seven the next week against green bay four versus tennessee and then eight versus houston so in his last game with Josh Allen he had eight targets three of which were red zone targets just so happens he only caught three of them for 35 yards yeah we'll take three red zone targets um but had a touchdown two in that game in week six so I mean I'm not that was sit- that was a Josh Allen game yep did he get hurt that game and then the backup came in through those balls to him that's that's possible because he right, did so- let's see he only had he had 17 attempts in week six, and, and the so backup he, had how many? He, de- he definitely got hurt. Who who even played that week for him? Was it Derek Anderson? I don't think Derek Anderson was on the team yet. I Unless think maybe been, Peterman might have come in. Right, which I can't even click on his name for the Bills because they just cut him. Right. Um. So you che- yeah, he you, didn't play you, week six. You check that theory for us. Um. But that I mean, he had other games with Josh Allen besides that game where he caught where he had more than a few targets and. You know, they're just figuring it out. So, yeah, Peterman came in and threw 12 balls that game. So that was uh, – let, let's play this game here. If you're if you're looking to acquire some Zay Jones right now, would you – okay. I, I took the last two weeks of scores because obviously he crushed it this past week with, you know, 30 points. But the last two weeks, average them together, he's averaging 15 points, 14 and a half points for the last two weeks. Puts him in a range of some guys who's averaging. So would you rather have Zay Jones or where am I going to go here first? I'm going to give you a, I'm going to toss you a, a, a nice one to hit out of the whole, hit out of the park, or am I going to throw a, a high stinky <laughs> cheese at you? give you the high stinky I cheese. lay off the high cheese. I don't understand why players can't lay off it's the high cheese. It's a vision thing, man. If it's eye level, don't swing at it. It does it's not eye level right away. Man, that man, who's Come got on, a act who's like got it. a rising fastball. <laughs> All the good ones. Man, that shit comes to eye level and they think, "Oh, I can see it. I can swing at it." That's but my mind was always like, eyes. "I'm not swinging at this Remember ball." Remember Rosenbagger? Eye level. Rosenbagger. Hit him with the high stinky cheese. I get the that Blake can't lay off the high cheese. I can. What do you got? 
Uh, Josh Doxson. Josh Doxson. First round pick, Josh Doxson. You want Zay Jones or Josh Doxson? Man, Josh is coming on here, mm-hmm. isn't he? What's he got going on here? Let's mm-hmm. see. A couple four touchdowns. Four for four. Everybody three else on for the team six. Hurt. Man, nobody likes Washington. Nobody likes Alex Smith. Yep. Ah, oh, this is a toughie. They're, about the same, they're the same size, 6'2", 200, same age. Got, uh, nah, Zay Jones is three years younger than Josh Doxson. This is true. I stand Josh corrected. Josh 26. Yeah. Uh, Josh Doxson's hashtag of really old. And he's got these Achilles issues in the past, some chronic tendonitis in his Achilles. <laughs> could reoccur. <laughs> man, but I've always been a proponent of Josh Doxson because he's such a downfield threat. They're just different players, man. He's a, he's a guy that's going to make your play in one and make your day in one play. And he Zay Jones to. is going to compile some catches. But he's with a quarterback that can't give you his play in one day. Unless he's getting coached up by Andy Reid. Hey, most 20-plus yard, yard completions last year from Alex Smith. Well, Not of course. really carrying over this year, but it's a new system. Give my man a break. He's good. They, hey, they're, they're top of the NFC East, aren't they? Crushing well, it. It's Redskins. Alex Smith's fault. <laughs> they give up 500 yards. That's crazy. Um, man. Okay, so I threw the high stinky cheese at you, and that's a toughie. We'll back off a little if, bit. If you, Let me pump the brakes on that. Doxson's toughy, obviously. I think I th- I th- I think <sighs> it's just two different types of players, you know? Well, they both play wide receiver and they both are gonna get you fantasy PPR points. One's gonna get you more, one's gonna get you less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Zay Jones. There it is. He made it thank you very much. Give me the younger guy on the up. Less injury and here's history. The deal. Here's how we play this. There is no ding, ding, ding sound here because this is Dynasty Fantasy Football, and you I don't know what the right answer is either. I, we're just having a good time. Right. I don't know. Who knows? Zay Jones. Okay, he's taking Zay Jones. I got one more good one for you. All right. Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon. Yeah. Are you going to commit? Yeah. To not commit? I got to take Josh Gordon. Really? If I could go get Josh Gordon with Zay Jones right now, I'd do that in a heartbeat. Okay. Absolutely. That dude's coming on. All right. I mean, how, that, he does play with Tommy. I wanted to take Josh Doxson for a second because I think he could be a number one dude. I just don't know that. I just haven't seen that from him. You've seen Josh Gordon be well, great. Well, Doxson's been hurt. We can make that excuse for people that's been hurt, but we he, can't make it for Doxson. He hasn't been hurt for like a year and a half. Well, he was hurt. He was. And then there takes time. Between, but Josh Gordon was real hurt. You sometimes know, mentally, between hurt. He still and, might be mentally hurt. Sometimes between hurt and not hurt is takes time i'll take josh gordon okay i'll take josh gordon over josh Doxson in a heartbeat i'll take him well the over. whole i mean that's the whole thing oh, well f- let's not pretend like zay jones didn't almost jump out of a window and his brother saved his life uh, allegedly but you also have josh gordon who's still running late to practices on the patriot side of things and could at any moment he's coming on strong he's, he's coming running on late to practice sure yeah man they wanted to bench him two weeks ago you don't remember that they said that he was late Yes. They'll cut a dude for that shit. I know. That's what I'm saying. Two times in the same week, he was late, and they were supposed to cut him, but they are like, man, we really need to win this week. This is a tough matchup. Mm-hmm. And they played him anyway. They said they were going to punish him punish him, and bench him. He was out there first snap. He caught the first ball of the game, I think. And they're like, <laughs> even the announcers were like, well, we don't know what to do with this one. He's supposed to be not in the game right, right. now. Patriots need to win, and they know it. If they were like 8-0 at the time, they probably would have benched him, but they had had a Couple, dropped a couple of losses Bronx earlier in the been season. out. Sure. They needed him. Missing weapons. So that's what I was saying is, you know, Zay Jones' problems aside, there's only been one of them documented, allegedly. And now we have – you're. I'm, I'm putting him up against Mr. Josh Gordon. Like, he's coming on strong. He's coming on strong. Oh, my God, he's not a Patriot anymore. Like, that could happen. That could happen, but the price of Josh Gordon used to be so much more expensive. Oh, it's not even close. Know? I'm just – yeah. but to, you know. I'll take Josh Gordon. Okay. Fair enough. I don't want to hit you with any more high sticky cheese because all right. this is tough. I mean, this is Zay Jones after all. We've we right, took him. Right. We've been we've been preaching for we've a month to discussion. get him off the clearance rack. He's right. out of the bargain bin, and now all of a sudden we're putting him up against Josh Doxson and right. you know, Mister One More Problem, and I'm never playing again. Josh Gordon. Right. That's that's the only reason Zay Jones seems. I feel comfortable playing Josh Gordon in my lineup right now. I, I don't know that I want to put Jay Jones Zay Jones in there oh, or okay. Josh Doxson really. 
I agree. I have had Josh Doxson in one lineup for two weeks getting hey, touchdowns. Dire straits, man. Six hey. buys in a week is tough. <laughs> got to do what you got to do, right? Injuries. It's hard out there for a pimp. <laughs> All right. You got anything else on Zay Jones? You got any more players? You want to put them up against? You mentioned a little Nelson Aguilar. That's a good one. Nelson Aguilar. We got a little paid dude Uh huh. on on a, well, what what should have been a pretty good offense. It tailed off. The Eagles, well, versus, Eagles struggling versus Dallas this week, but... Monster underdog, underdogs to the Saints this week, too, like minus nine. I think I got to stick with Aguilar. I mean, he's if Zay Jones could become Nelson Aguilar, then we got to win here. You yeah. Know? If, yeah. He could, if he could make it to where he gets paid by a team and is in a good offense with a good quarterback, granted, a bunch of options. They like to spread it around. But, sure. But, yeah, fair uh, enough. If, if we were talking about Aguilar – at the end of last season, we've had this would be a much chippier conversation mm-hmm. about Aguilar. He, you know, he's and he the, came out hot with no Alshon, but then you throw Alshon in there and he's a beast. Sure, and then you know the quarterbacks coming back from knee injury started kind of slow, has really come on strong, missed and, some games, and then all of a sudden they bring in Golden Tate and it's kind of crowded over there. I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I guess it's a good move by them. I don't think Golden Tate will be an Eagle next year. He's in the Indy. You know, they assumed his contract from Detroit. He was on the last year of his deal, so yeah, he'll be a free agent next year. I don't think they sign him. Well, they could. They're still. I, I mean, they, they could. They've spent I mean, a lot of money on the D line, but even in the offensive line. But even still, they still got. They don't have that twenty five million dollar quarterback salary to pay. So they they got that's they got true. money to throw around. That's true. All right. Well, that's enough about Zay Jones as far as I agree. One or one or the other. It's. It's tough out there. Like you said, we just picked him up off the bargain bin. Wiz is a clearance rack player we've been giving you for three or four weeks now, and he goes 80 for 90 for eight for 90 for a touch. And then you're going to have that value spike. And that's why Jay Wayne and Casey were telling you to get him for the last month because you didn't have to pay for that value spike. And now you might have to. Right. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take another quick break. We'll be back and wrap this thing up with a little uh, recap of, uh, we'll revisit a little Aaron Jones. Mid level boss. For your pleasure. Looking for a promotion. We'll be back. Welcome. <laughs> that never gets old. You can't do that. Welcome back. You got to cut that. What? We're not cutting that? Nah. You're, you're serious? Yeah. You're just going to hate on Chris Harris like that? We do it every so often. <laughs> every so often. Welcome. <laughs> back. <laughs> it is funny. All right. Fair enough. Aaron Jones. Mid-level boss. Took the NFL by storm this past week. Just buzz, buzz, buzz all over Twitter, all over YouTube. They got players talking about him. Aaron Rodgers is like, yeah, we need to get this dude some more work. He's the best running back in the league all of a sudden. we uh, He's getting put up next to Dalvin Cook and stuff. Like, sure. Who would you rather have? Mm-hmm. He's getting out of control a little bit. Way out of control. We talked about him a couple weeks ago. Mid-level bosses. Mm-hmm. He made the cut. We uh we were throwing around first round picks. Yep, we uh, had a, we had the discussion. I was definitely in to give up a first to get him. Casey was was down. You had some reluctance. A little probably the definitely the most hesitant in the room For to sure. go giving away my first round Said pick. You rather not. And it and and I said it then. I'll say it now. It wasn't Aaron Jones. It was Aaron Rodgers. You know his upside and downside is Aaron Rodgers. And because Aaron Rodgers throws it from the three. And because Aaron Rodgers throws in touchdowns from the 30, and the running backs usually only get work between the 40s. And if you check, that ain't a lot of space. And it's about 20 yards to get your work in. And that was two weeks ago we had this conversation. And then last week. So has anything changed for well, you over there? Well, I mean, you have to pay attention to the usage. Now, last week, two weeks ago we had that conversation. And then the next week after the podcast came out, they play against the Patriots and – all the red zone stuff. There was a red zone carry, but everything, nothing happened for Aaron. He got the he four two red zone carries. I'm he short got, him, but he got he got you he got you ten points, which is exactly what I told you was going to happen. I was like, he's going to come out here, he's going to get a little bit of work, and he's he's going to get you ten. I don't want that. He got the majority. Of I don't the work. want that in my lineup. He's going to get you ten. But then this past week, he came out at you and got you three tens. He got you thirty. Thirty two. So if you're saying what has changed, I don't know if anything changed other than the defense you're playing against. A, a at least a a coordinated defense in the Patriots playing at the Patriots versus you come home and you're a ten point favorite against the Dolphins and 
you know, the Dolphins tried to hang in there for a little bit. They were pulling out fake punts and everything. But at the end of the day, you got Brock Osweiler playing on the road against the against the Packers, and it just you can only keep up so long. Yeah. And one of the reasons why they couldn't keep up is because Aaron Jones was busting them off. Right. Aaron Jones was looking good. Also had four red zone carries. That's right. And so Jamal Williams had three total carries. What has changed? Zero the, in the red zone. What has Jamal. changed is the fact that. Aaron Jones is obvious is playing is out snapping out carrying out he took touching it and out, he ran with it out everything in Jamal Williams. So you can't you have to you have to see that you have to notice that you have to swallow that and say yeah I mean was was right now would I give up that or late first for Aaron Jones I mean I I definitely would right this second because everybody loves Aaron Jones but no because it. But you're not going to you buy get him. You're you not going to get him for a first. You're not going to buy think. him for a late first and turn around and sell him for more to somebody else because they would just skip you and cut you out and get that deal done without you. You know what I mean? So like, I don't think you're getting him for a first. Any, I mean, I'd still sell him to you for a, a good, a decent first. I mean, I'm still down. Like, obviously, you're you still you down. Just home. down, huh? You just played at home against the Dolphins. <clears throat> Does he look a fantastic? And he's averaging ten yards a carry. I'm not saying he's not. I'm not saying he doesn't look good. I'm, I'm, I would give you the late first, yes, and and we got the air quotes late versus mid versus early, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, and it's like, yeah, you can at this point, ten games into the season, you see the guys at the bottom that are two and eight, you know, if you're going to the playoffs or not, or if you're on the verge. So like, if you're the best team in the league and you got that late first, man, yeah, you probably should have done what K, you and Casey said two weeks ago and bought Aaron Jones. But if you're two and eight and you're about to be in that one two one three maybe one one area of a rookie draft i'm gonna count those cards and see what happens in, in the rookie draft like, yeah yeah I, I just i don't see enough happening for aaron jones to be that third or fourth round startup value player he had but four red zone carries this past game uh, against a weak defense of the dolphin they don't they don't stop the run so what that's good for the Packers to actually try to do what's the easiest thing to do to get it in the end zone instead of making Aaron Rodgers run for his life and make him work for Aaron him. Rodgers says he wants him to get even more work. That is the special kicker here. What that Aaron if, Rodgers wants, Aaron Rodgers usually gets. Agreed. And if and most of the time, Aaron Rodgers wants to throw it to Devontae Adams and Jordy Nelson. Jordy's gone. Who you can throw it to? You know, Jimmy Graham, shell of himself, running around out there. So. If Aaron Rodgers said, let me call more plays for me to hand it to Aaron Jones and make my job easier, that's the that's that would be the thing that would be different out of the last like three years. You know? I'm not gonna say that the last three years is thrown out the window over one game, but the writing has been on the wall for a couple of weeks now. Aaron Rodgers has been in the media for a month now saying we need to get Aaron Jones more involved. And if that's what's coming out here, then maybe we get another week of eight it, it, I mean, he doesn't obviously doesn't have to average eight yards a carry to be good, but I mean, he was gashing the Dolphins. So if he goes out right. and starts gashing the Seahawks, we've well, seen flashes of him gashing, right? We've seen gashes you know, being flashed. You know flashed. he can do it. We've seen flash of gash. And to me, like that's that's what I like about this game in Dynasty is because this is where you can get ahead, right? Because mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think you could acquire. I mean, you say you would still sell him for my first to me. Yeah, you're two and eight. You want to send over your first for Aaron Jones? You got it. Right. I don't think that's the norm. I don't think most people are going to give well, that's Aaron because, Jones no, up for no, a first because they ever most people play this game in a week to week scenario. Right. That's you got it. And week to week, it's it it it's getting better. I, there's I know, momentum. I know the production wasn't necessarily there for versus New England last week, but the 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 opportunity certainly was. I would imagine if you went back and looked the last three years at a running back scoring two rushing touchdowns. His name was probably James Starks, and we probably dismi- dismissed it. Or maybe John Kuhn got in two times, and we dismissed it. Like, this is the first time we're not dismissing a running back in pa- for the Packers in three years since Eddie Lacy was young and spry. Like that's right. what, So we just haven't seen it in three years. Right. But you, these are, this is the game we have to take, right? You have to, you're not going to win. Are you going to win every trade? No. But mm-hmm. you got to make these moves weeks before they come to fruition. Sure. That's... That's to me how I like to play the game. I, and well, I'm I like not to see win the, it every time. I like to see the trades that happened six weeks ago that Aaron Jones was picked up for cheap. Like I get it. Yes, and right now, does it? My does it? Am I the odd man out here? Hell yeah, I am. Does my two weeks ago? Does it me saying I would be really hesitant to give up my first rounder for Aaron Jones? Does that look really bad now? Yeah, two weeks. 
not when he was against the Patriots getting you 10 points in your lineup. That's exactly what I said I didn't want to get my first rounder to do. I don't want to get my first rounder to just ha- have the same amount of points that I could plug in somebody off my bench and get. But, but when I mean, you get he had four targets and 14 carries last week versus two weeks ago versus the Patriots. It didn't amount to getting you a touchdown and really putting you over the top. But that's but that's the history of the position. It has not amounted to anything in three years. In what general, I'm trying to say. but but not not the Packers necessarily. I mean, there's just there's just so much opportunity for for scoring. Oh, we wanted it. We've been wanting that opportunity. We've been wanting Aaron Rodgers to have a running back since again since Eddie Lacy was young and spry. It's the same that we've been wanting Andrew Luck to have a running back. Obviously, he missed a year with his arm, but we finally got Marlon Mack. You know, and then all of a Who sudden, let you down last week. Sure, but th- I mean, that's you know that's You're still down to give a first to get Marlon Mack. So I, I would give a first to get Aaron Jones too. All right, I'm just not giving up that that time. I'm not giving up that one 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 two because we don't even really know. We don't know enough about old Nikhil Harry yet, Mister <laughs> Six Four Two Twenty Five. I've well, like you about to, to take a wide receiver in the first round of the rookie draft next year. I would, I'm not, and I'm not saying I'm taking anybody at the one two. I'm think I'm saying that somebody else might love these guys so much that I can use that and package up and get DeAndre Hopkins. Well, that's that's, all, that's, that's all I'm trying the to case. do. Someone's gonna love these. That, every, that happens every year, exactly. And then they get drafted. And, I'm and not the NFL married, tells you exactly what the I'm going not on. married to my draft picks. I just know the value of the draft picks when the draft comes around and I'm using those to package them up. I don't have to make that pick, but I really like having that pick so I can use it and do stuff with it. Or maybe you don't get to move on it and you have to draft one of these guys and you know, it's a it's a 50-50 shot in the first round of a rookie draft whether that's going to pan out or not. This is true. I could take that pick right now and get Aaron Jones running back who's uh, the last three weeks. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that eight point six in the in between the seventeen and the thirty two. <laughs> I'll tell. I'll deal with that. That's going to happen with anyone. All right. But if you're getting fourteen carries and, and four targets, I'll, I'll deal with whatever the production ends up being with. Okay. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, know. this is we got the two extremes. We got the fourteen carries that got you 10 points and then we got the 15 carries that got you 32 points so we'll see next another week. five targets another four red zone it, like that was that was one of your arguments was that J- that jamal williams might be the goal line back here like that didn't, he wasn't that that's isn't. what i know i just said you gotta you gotta see that you gotta right. swa- i gotta swallow that and be like you know what if this if this team is leaning on aaron jones like he's the their their workhorse back is not like the Steelers work right. horse back. They're not. Right. He's not going to get twenty something carries and catch eight balls. That's just not what they do. But if they start it getting anywhere, if they get half of that, if they can give you half of that, and Aaron Jones can get you fifteen to eighteen points a week, that's a lot better than ten. And if you're going to give me these opportunities with one guy, first ver, facing the opposite of a stacked box, right? Then. No, I'm picking. I can pick up what you're putting down. I smell what you, I smell. I'm stepping in. If you smell, what? However, that's supposed to go. <laughs> stepping in, and I can smell it on my shoe. Right. Like I don't even know how. Running that's... with boiling water, <laughs> <laughs> with a shaky handle, and no shoes on. Yeah. I don't know what's going on over here. All right, well, let's. Uh, I think that'll wrap it up for today. We wanted to get to a little bit of Matt Breida. Uh, we wanted to break him down, but we've uh, per usual gone very long on this uh, show. I don't even know how that happens each and every week consistently. It's it's. It's hard. It's hard to get through something real quick, and uh, there's just a lot to talk about. And then we, if we go, if we go and break down a guy, and we put him up against ten other guys, this is it's true. It's going to take a little this while. Is true. But hopefully, there's some good value in there for you. And I you don't think you something. got again, but I don't think you got shortchanged on any argument. I don't think you got here. shafted no. for sure, for sure. But there's a good, there's a good breakdown argument coming for Matt Breida. We're going to take that over to Patreon again. FFDynasty.com, yep. middle of the page to the right. Log on. Hit us up with the Patreon five dollar holler. We really, we really appreciate everybody that's over there, and we need some more friends over there. Absolutely, it's five bucks a month. You get an extra hour plus of content every single week. It's exclusive to Patreon. Every once in a while, we release an old episode onto this uh, free show portion just to sh- kind of give you guys a sneak peek of what's going on. But every week, it's been growing. Uh, the numbers, the, no- the number of Patreons grows. The number of questions grows. The the interaction grows. And uh, hopefully we all grow and we all learn and, and we move forward. And at the very least, after six months, you get a free T-shirt. Sure. So it pays for itself, plus all the content and the access. Definitely get in on it. Hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. No Casey Myers this week at IMC Myers. You can find Big Co at Dynasty Big Co. I'm at Jay Wayne's World. 
If you're listening on iTunes, please hit us up with that five-star review. Just go to the ratings, click the little five stars. You can leave a comment if you like or not. Up to you. Just click it. Go over to YouTube, hit subscribe. Uh, we've been going live on Sunday mornings, answering sit-start questions. Uh, we didn't this past week. We just went. We didn't have time. We just went straight onto the Patreon. But everybody that was well, on I was Patreon traveling. Got Casey was traveling, so things were a little crazy. But we do, we do look out for the Patreon people. Yep. And another thing about that, real quick, we're revved up about it because we're obviously going to finish the season strong and help people with the playoff pushes and try to get that championship belt and try to ho- hoist that trophy. But also, we're so excited about going into this off season and. And turning the switch after the season to the rookie stuff right. and just trying to siphon through those rookies, figuring out the best rookie draft we can put together, and then also digging through what happened this year and trying to find those values on the veterans that dig it, bring you some more Robert Woods kind of guys. Oh, man. And just, just bring you Robert those. Wo- Who have we bought you in the past, man? So many dudes. Thielen. We gave, we gave you Thielen before he was anything. We gave you Woods before he was anything. We gave you we gave you uh, Kenny Galladay before you, anybody knew oh, his yeah. name. I gave, mean, as far as rookies, we were first go, out there on Carry On Johnson. First no doubt about it. Kareem Hunt. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could even claim Alvin Kamara. Shit. Nobody was on Alvin Kamara like we were. No. Two this years. This is good ago. stuff. This uh, uh, Hunt, Rev- Cooper Cup Galladay. Cooper, you were hot. You were super hot. Chris heavy Godwin. On Cooper, Gall- Cooper, uh, Cooper. James Cup. Connor. Oh yeah. Nobody's on James Connor like we were on uh-uh. James Connor. Not even close. So we'll we'll find all those guys again in this next draft. Oh, it's going to be exciting. We're we're excited about it, and and you know obviously we're going to keep bringing this show to you every week in the off season like we've been doing for three years. But the uh, the Patreon side of that, you're going to get the same type of stuff in the in the off season for Patreon. We're going to be right. going knee deep in the rookies over there too. So um, and helping people with the off season trades as, as well. Absolutely. And gear it up for their rookie and free agent drafts and startup drafts too for the people for you're always you always need a good startup every year. Yeah, I think so. Don't don't take the fun out of it. You got you got you got rookie drafts, you got <sighs> veteran free agent drafts, and you got startups. When does it ever end? It never ends. If you do a startup every year, you got to do it. You're just gonna end up with like however many years you live worth of dynasty teams. You got to do it. <laughs> I don't know how you keep it all straight, Big Cole. I'm, I'm envious and, and my life uh, is ruined. Don't be envious. Wondrous. My, you can be envious of the fun I've had with the startups because it's. I mean, there was two or three a year for three years in a row. Yeah. And for two hundred dollars, two fifty on on uh, FFPC just because I couldn't get enough, and it's just it's fantastic. Gets a little tough when you're trying to go through every week and send quality trade offers. You know, you have or to, when you have Levy on Bell on all those teams. Oh God. <laughs> That stings. Right. Stings a bit. Can't stop once I started. <laughs> stings. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, y'all. Let's get out of here. Thanks for listening, everyone. This has been the FF Dynasties Married to the Game.